Hello everyone, it's Sheree from Rebel Technology here and thank you for tuning back in. Today we're going to go into the actual design of the PGL. So in a previous video we showed you each control, what it does and how it sounds and how to call, control each parameter to create a musical sort of looping glitchy fun. From today onwards we're going to show you what's inside. We'll try to break it down to smaller, simpler pieces so you can understand what's actually going on inside that patch. So first thing first, if you can get your usual dev default patch opened and then double click on it. And when you have the gen patch opened, unlock it if it's still locked. And then the first thing is to save this. Do this, PGL, and like that. L toot and then I'm gonna save this as well. It's the same name. And then I'm gonna reload the patch. Check back, so that's all good. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is to, if you go to, so let's open the example patches. If you've already done the um, first tutorial with the tap delay and the crossfade delay, you should already have this all gem patches master folder. If not, please go to our GitHub site. We will include the link to our GitHub below with a clear instruction. It's very simple to download. And when you finish downloading, you will see a folder called Owl Gen Patches Dash Master. And inside that folder, you should see the folder called PGL. And then double click on the PGL.maxproj, which will open this window. And when you double click on Gen, you will see what's going on inside. And it does look a bit complicated, but we're going to break it down to much smaller chunks and simplify it so you can follow each step without any complications. So, for today, all we need is these objects. So let's copy this and then let's paste it into our new patch. Uh, I'll just move this comment up there and then this audio in and out, in and out, down like there. And I'm going to extend the length of outputs a little bit further down so we'll have more space. I think that should be good enough. And then we're gonna go back to the original PGL patch and then scroll all the way down to the bottom. And then we're gonna take these lot. And okay, yeah, let's copy these and then paste it. Just gonna make this look like the same object, like that. And only extra we need to add is the phaser. So 
So I'm just going to add that. So let me just move this a little bit down. Yep. Okay. And I don't think we don't need the PGL original one anymore. I'm not going to save that. Close it. Okay. So before we go any further, let me explain the core concept of PGL. So the PGL, the it stands for Pitch Grain Looper. So ultimately, what PGL does is a live looping. So what happens is any audio signal comes in from the input that goes into a buffer. It's basically, buffer is a little space in your OWL RAM where you can store values. So... It's a bit like a delay. So you have your little buffer in your RAM. That's your little empty space. And you basically fill that space with the incoming audio. And then you basically play that incoming audio in the way that you want to play back. So you can change the length of the loop. You can change the direction of the loop. And you can change the pitch of the loop as well. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to actually allocate the space in the RAM and then how to write those value into those RAM and then reading back, hence doing the playback. So first things first. So the very first object you need to set up is this thing called data. So data is a sort of a sister object of the buffer object which is looks like this the reason i chose data instead of buffer which practically is the same thing is the data has an extra outlet and this left outlet this is a very useful outlet for this particular processing so let me just get rid of this so if you hover your mouse it says length in samples so basically, as soon as you type in data, that's your object name, and then pitch loop, this is the attributes to basically assign the name of this particular space in the buffer. So other objects can refer to that particular space. Third attribute is your length of the buffer or the space or the size of the buffer in samples, and then the third attribute is how many channels it has. We're making a stereo effect, so this time we type in two. So as soon as you set the, the size of the buffer, it will automatically report that value into the left outlet of the object. And that goes into the third inlet of the counter object, which basically set the maximum limit of the counter should count. And what I'm doing is I'm actually inputting the integer one into the counter. And if you remember how the counter works, um, as soon as the processing is on, it starts counting the number by the increment of the number that coming into the leftmost inlet, in this case one. So every sample passes, it actually adds the number one into the output. And basically this three object is creating a constant stream of counting how many samples it has passed. And that actually comes in very, very handy. So, so basically what it's doing is counter starts from counting from zero all the way up to 48,000. And that's basically is the size of your buffer. And that value goes into these objects. And uh, if you are familiar with MSP, you already know what poke does. If you don't know, don't worry, I'm just gonna explain it to you. So poke is a very, very handy object and it quite literally does what it says on the name. It actually pokes the value into the specified space in the buffer. In this case, so we named it pitch loop. So if you set the poke 
first attribute, uh, which is the name, you can basically tell this poke object to write the values into the data. The way it works is, so your leftmost inlet, that's your value input. So whatever value that you wanted to write, that needs to go in there. So in this case, we want to write the value from left input into this one, and then right input to the next poke. And then your second inlet is your position to write. So remember, so we've already set the buffer size to 48,000 samples, which means we have to tell every time you input a value from the audio input, you have to specifically tell poke which space in the buffer to write that value in. This is where the values from the counter object becomes really handy. So this is automatically counting from zero to 48 and then looping back to zero. So every time there's an audio arrives, it automatically tells poke which space to write that incoming value. And then the third inlet, that's your channel to write. It's slightly confusing, but the channel starts from zero. It doesn't start from channel one. So when you have two channels, your first channel will be channel zero, and then the second channel will be one. So this bit up here is the function that basically just keep updating the buffer in the real time. So whatever you feed into it, it will constantly be recorded over and over and over again on this one second of space. So that's all good. So now we need to add the object that reads all the value that is being written. So there's a there's a quite loads of objects in Gen that let you read a value that is stored in the RAM. And when I was developing the PGL, I did try loads of different ones and figured out that, well, at least for me, the, the object called sample is the best one. One of the reason is it goes quite well with the phaser. So phaser basically spits the value between zero and one, depending on the frequency that you set. And then if you hover it onto the left inlet of the sample, it just says a phase to read between zero and one. So this is undoubtedly a good pair. So this spits zero and one, it requires zero and one to read the values of what's being stored in the RAM. And then the second input is the same here. That's your channel offset. So again, it starts from channel zero and then channel one. Oh, and then all you need to set on the sample is to tell the name. And so you need to, again, match the name up on the buffer. So this time, again, we just type in pitch loop or whatever the name that you wanted to use, that's fine. And that goes the same for the second object. Again, I just played with the interpolation and I figured the spleen interpolation is the most sort of smooth and nice. So I'm just using that. But by all means, try other interpolation algorithm. That's quite fun because you can sort of hear a slight difference in the, the way things being played back. Okay, so... The next step is the, let's do the usual thing. So we'll do the mix so we can hear the difference between the dry and the wet. And do the same right there. Let's grab our param D. That's, that's what we normally we normally use for your mix. So that bit is sorted. The final thing is to do here is to tell the phaser the frequency of the playback. We're still going to keep this quite simple. So let's grab param A. Uh, let's just move this down a little bit more and include these guys as well push it down 
so at the moment, the param A is outputting the value from 0 to 1. So that means it only, if I just plug this in straight away into the phaser, it only slows things down or make the pitch lower, but it doesn't go higher. So just let's do a little simple math and we'll just multiply it by 2. And then we don't want it to go, the phaser go into the, the like a zero frequency, so it's, it's just going to stop. Uh, we're just going to use a clip and then clip the lower value to non-zero and then clip the value into two. And plug that in like so. Okay, and we're going to save this and check if this is working. So, fingers crossed, here it comes. So that's the wet. Change the pitch and the playback speed. And that's a complete dry. Okay, so I think that's working. So let's stop the tutorial here. So this is the first step of your live looper and the processor. So from next tutorial onwards, we're gonna add more exciting features like changing the loop length and then changing the direction and you know, so making that loop length in sync with the rest of the like a modular ecosystem. So keep tuning back in. Thanks for watching as usual. Don't forget to hit subscribe and like. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a shout over the, on the comments. We're happy to guide you through it. So thanks for watching and happy wiggling, happy patching. I see you next time. See you later. Bye.